Welcome back to my channel guys and to all of you that are celebrating Christmas these days, Merry Christmas! Now let's get to the thing at hand and that's the review of Burson Playmate that I have here. Um, as you can see from the outside it's pretty much a nondescript black box, nothing special here and there is like um, industrial feel and design to it that I quite liked, to be honest. One interesting thing to mention about it is Playmate is actually designed so it can fit in your PC case. Here on the sides you can see um, screw holes, so if you decide to do that, screws from both sides will keep it firmly in, pla in place in your PC case. But let's talk more about connections that we find on the back of the unit. So, as you can see here, there are two digital inputs, USB and optical input. And also two inputs for power supply. This one is if you use it like I am, uh, like a desktop DAC amp, so you use provided power brick. It comes with the power brick in the box. The other one is if you use it in your PC case, as I mentioned, then you basically just use PC power supply connector. It's a standard connector, all of you have it in your PC and it will power on and off together with your PC. Now there is an on off switch here and a pair of preamp outputs, RCA outputs. And to finish the story about connections, some of them are located in the front. Uh, so here, as you can see, this is a traditional 6.25 millimeters headphone output, as well as an odd addition, and that's uh, microphone input. And this is not something that you'd usually find on DAC amp combos, but it shows that Burson is dedicated to gamers too, and not just to audiophiles. So it's a nice addition, I think. Also, third digital input, it's USB-C port to connect uh, this unit with your smartphone, tablet or something like that. Now let's power it on. Okay, here it is. And you navigate through menus by using this button as well as volume knob to go uh, through options. When you decide to change something, volume knob also acts like a button. You click it, you change something that you want, uh, confirm it and get out of the menu. And I'm not sure how much of this you can actually see on screen, but a few features inside of the settings menu are important if you want to achieve maximum fidelity. Um, one of them is of course uh, choosing low gain or high gain mode. And to be completely honest, I done most of my testing in high, high gain mode. Why? Because I simply felt um, it sounded more lively and um, more dynamic, more energetic with almost all of my headphones as well as on preamp outputs. And I actually um, switched to low gain mode only when I tried it with few sensitive in-ear models. Because in that case, um, volume control was actually, I would use something just range from zero to 10. And that doesn't give you fine adjustment of the volume, that's the first thing about that. The second thing is when music was paused or stopped, I could hear a slight background hiss. And high gain modes and very low impedance headphones doesn't really work together. There is some uh, current running through drivers creating that background hiss. That's quite normal, that's why you have low gain mode, if, you, if you're using in-ears, uh, it's exactly for that. For everything else, I just suggest using high gain. Next option in the menu is filter actually. You have a quite traditional set of digital filters here. Linear phase, minimum phase, um, slow, fast and so on. It's um, something that if you're interested in, 
you can google it and in my opinion they do make a slight difference in sound signature but not really a big one just play with it see what you find most appealing and that's it now the next uh, part here is very interesting it's called dpll and basically that's some sort of jitter suppression by default, it's set on high for both DSD and PCM signals. But you should experiment with that because when I put these to low, okay, I just accidentally got out of the menu. When I put both of these to low instead of high, I heard improvement in sound quality. It might happen with some of your PCs that uh, you start losing connection to PC if you put it to some low settings. It happened to me if I turned both of these off. So I had to uh, use at least low setting, but to my ears it sounded crispier and more transparent than when it was on the high setting, which is factory default because they worry about um, DAC providing stable connection out of the box and you don't have to worry about that. But experiment with this if you want higher fidelity. And last option I'm going to mention is called emphasis. Now, as I understand um, earlier units of Playmate used to come with this option on by default, but my unit came with this option off which is how I suggest you use it, because you don't want it to um, attenuate your high frequencies. You will lose some fine details and airiness of the sound. Of course, if you wish to have a little bit bass and mid-range heavy sound, you can try it for yourself. I didn't like it personally. Okay, now that we have that out of our way, let's talk about sound quality. And the first thing I did is connected Playmate in my main setup, which consists of Cyrus Amp and Cath LS50s. And I used it as a duck. Okay, for that purpose, I actually used Topping D50 here to match its output to traditional 2 volts output and I found that to be somewhere around 80 to 81, 2, 3, something like that. I'm not... this is like a really fine step so it doesn't really matter, somewhere around 80 to say. And what I was um, welcomed with is like this really huge and upfront lush sound. Now, bass notes were weighty and deep, and mid-range was kind of very meaty, uh, the way that I don't often hear. Um, high frequencies were pretty detailed, but maybe not as um, crisp and clean and analytical as I heard on some other ducks. But all in all, uh, sound stage was really wide and uh, singers sounded quite upfront and present and intimate to my ears, like they're in the room. And I really liked that. I compared it to, to D50 that I mentioned and I realized that Playmate sounds simply richer and fuller while D50 maybe sound, sounded more analytical and cleaner, especially in the high frequency region. And that would be my impression of like really huge, rich, but kind of warmish uh, type of sound with um, emphasis on fullness of mid-range and upper bass. If I ended my impressions here, but I did not because I was using Burson with my integrated amp and it has volume control already. So I was thinking, why do I limit its output to 2 volts? I'm using some sort of attenuation provided here. So I'm basically using it as a preamp, not as a pure duck, right? 
So I tried turning volume up to 99, which is the maximum level. And at uh, that moment, at 99, you're basically not using a person's digital attenuation anymore. And I started listening everything all over again, and I was really positively surprised by the change that I heard. So what happened? Bass notes were still weighty and deep, but now they became cleaner and uh, tighter, tidier sounding. How can I explain that? Uh, no more that slight feeling of bloom that you got earlier, especially in the upper bass region. Now I could just hear more of the edges in bass notes and more of the texture, for example, bass guitar string. I could hear more clearly that it's a string. Same happened in mid-range too. So for example, vocals, they kept being forward and present in the mix between my speakers, but they lost some of that warmth and fattiness they had before. And now they sounded more clean and precise and I could hear singer's voice texture more clear. And the last but not least high frequencies, that slight feeling of wail that I mentioned that as them not being perfectly crisp just disappeared. Now high frequencies became very precise. Um, I had a feeling of really great resolution happening in that high frequency range. So after realizing all of that, I took uh, my D50S again and I compared them again. And now I realized that I told you D50S sounded a little bit more analytical and precise before. Okay, that's lost. Basically, it still sounds like that, but when your pre-out is at its max level and you use Playmate as a duck, now it sounds more precise, faster, and it can reveal more details than D50S can. The difference is not huge, but it's hearable. And I kept preferring Playmate, I kept turning back to it to listen my music after I finished comparing them actually. Transients were a little bit more energetic and sharp and I could catch a little bit more nuances in a singer's vocals. And one last thing, mid-bass and bass uh, through topping D50S sounded just a little bit blurrier and muddier compared to Burson at maximum level, of course. So that's my suggestion to all of you that are going to use it as a duck. If you already have volume control somewhere further down the line, like your integrated amp, use it as you would use any other DAC at maximum volume level. Of course, if you're using it with power amp uh, or headphones, you had to use its internal preamp, but that's not a problem because uh, no preamp ever sound as crisp and clean as pure line out. Uh, and in that case, we are not comparing it with other DACs. Uh, it's uh, apples and oranges there. Next, I moved to testing it with headphones. I had uh, my AKG's K92 and Tuckstar's Pro 82 at hand, but I also asked my friend to bring his Biodynamics DT990, which are 250 ohms, I think, and um, more difficult to drive um, than my headphones. And with all of them, the sound signature was basically everything I said about big upfront, lush, rich sound on its pre-outs goes for headphones too. I noticed that all of these bigger cans 
had enough power to be driven to a reasonably loud levels, even in low gain modes. But as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I preferred high gain mode because it, it gave me more punch and more bite to, to, to the music, so I used it for all of these bigger cans. And I made some quick comparisons with duck amp combos that I had at hand. Uh, one of them is being like really cheap uh, Dragonfly, black, and uh, the difference is really big. It's not comparable. Actually, Burson sounds much tighter, much more resolving, and the uh, soundstage is wider. There is more uh, resolution to it and control of the bass notes, especially. This one sounds a little bit muddy and blurred in comparison. I also had uh, my iFi Zen duck. Um, I left it in the other room. I forgot to bring it here for the video. And the Burson Playmate is again clear winner there. Um, starting, first thing I noticed is how much bass notes are better controlled. They, they are simply hitting harder and with more discipline. Bass notes through Zen do sound very pleasant and weighty, but kind of warmish and not really as well defined as with Burson here. Uh, vocals are simply more present, prominent, and have more tiny details. You can more easily hear sing singers breathing around microphone, taking breath, or uh, doing anything like that. So basically, Burson Playmate is more resolving device. And compared to Zen, Playmate simply sounded more jumpy, more lively, more dynamic. Um, Zen sounded more nice and warm, but kind of laid back and blended. And this one is simply more eager to strike, jump and hit. Uh, with every sound it produces. Well, that's expected, it's more expensive too, but but I'm simply comparing it with something that I have at hand currently. I cannot compare it with something I heard one or two years ago, or I heard in my friend's system, because that's not possible to do. Why am I doing this is because if you decide to purchase a duck amp combo in this price range and give 400 bucks, you should know what is it that it will bring you compared to cheaper devices. And this should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway. To notice all of these differences completely your system has to be revealing. Your headphones have to be good. Your system, if you're using it with amp and speakers, have to be resolving. And one thing that I actually forgot to mention this, this whole time is that this is the basic unit with um, basic op amps. I didn't do any op-amp rolling, I didn't try any fancy uh, Burson V6 amps or anything like that. Um, but I am curious now that uh, how would it sound with those upgrades? Because it sounds great already as it is, so I'm just wondering like how much better <laughs> can it possibly sound with different op-amps? But that's a story for another time, and if I get to doing that, I'll let you know about the results. I get asked about price and price to performance ratio a lot. And this is a short story that I wanted to share with you. Just be reasonable. So let's say that you're using a hundred bucks headphones. Of course, you should not spend 400 bucks on Playmate here. It would make 80% of your whole system budget. And it's not justified because the difference is probably not going to be that big to justify the price. But if you're rocking a several hundred bucks headphones that are demanding, um, they 
ask for a lot of power to be juiced up, then something like this makes much more sense. Or in the case of my room setup, I hooked it up to a Cyrus amp and CAF LS50 that together that costs almost uh, 3000 bucks. And in that case, difference between this one and this one is less than 10% of my whole system budget. And the sound quality difference definitely justifies it. I'd say it's, it's definitely more than 10%. So I'm not comparing just the price of source and comparing the final price of a whole system. And that's how you should look at the price always too, in my opinion. But when we start talking about spending these amounts of money on your whole system, is that justified by the final audio quality? I don't know, it's very subjective. Is like everything else in life. Is uh, wearing expensive clothes justified? Is driving expensive cars justified? Or going to foreign countries on a vacation and spending thousands? It's simply very personal. If you're like me, if you really like audio and, and you enjoy listening to the music every day for a long period of times, you probably like me think, yeah, it is, it is justified. So if you are looking for a DAC amp combo at this price range, I really think you should take Burson Playmate into consideration. It's just good device across the board. It's powerful and detailed sounding headphone amp. It's really good DAC too. And uh, I'm actually going to keep using it for some time in my main setup as a DAC connected to my integrated amp. Okay, that would be all for today, guys. Thank you for watching this review. If you like it, please subscribe to the channel. And please go and check out my new website uh, because there you can find even more in-depth reviews with things that I maybe forgot to mention in, this, in these videos and more technical informations and things like that. So thank you again for watching and see you next time.